It ain't like I was out on the street committing crimes every day, but I was protecting myself in the wrong way. I was carrying a bunch of firearms. I was flashing them on Instagram. Mm. I'm riding down the highway doing 120. I'm drunk driving everywhere. I'm going to four clubs a night. I'm stopping in all the popping hoods in my city, stopping shooting dice, going to f here, f there. That's what led to me getting locked up. So when you when you when you sit in a cell for four years and you looking back at your last five years that you was on the street doing, you like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. If I would have spent most of that time strictly working and and being more active with my children, out with my kids places, I would have never been been pulled over by the police. Mm -hmm. I actually love LA. I got a son there. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so you, you have to love LA. Yeah, I love LA. But I used to live there. This is a little expensive for no reason, I feel like. Kind of like New York. Yeah. Very, very expensive for, excuse me. Oh. Very, very expensive for New York uh, for no reason. But I love LA, though. California is cool. Okay, yeah. And California is cool. I just, the weather, I'm like, it's not my favorite for the weather, but especially if you have a sun there, I really? get it. It's not your favorite for the weather. It's always sunny in California. But it's sunny. But, but then, it's dry. But yes, like I like New York because it's humid. Yeah. It's not always humid, but in the summer it's humid and you don't get this like dry heat like you do in, have you been to Colorado? Yes. Do you know that feeling there? Yes. You know the dry feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Where you need to like blow your nose and spray some shit up there? <laughs> right, right. But um, I never really felt like it's, it was always okay to me. Does it you know, like you? born, being Do you born. Want to pass us? Where I'm from, Probably. being born where I'm from, you fucking love getting out of town. Because we in the hood all day. Okay. It ain't nothing but fucking hatred and bullshit going on all day. So we love to get away. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. You, yeah. Do you want to pass us too? That's okay. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> the more the merrier. Everyone's welcome. Um, I get that. And also, like, just getting out and traveling stuff, like, I like that too. But I just don't like when I feel like my nose is like a desert and my body feels the same way. Right, yeah, nah, I feel I don't like that. Nah, anytime I'm away, I'm just blessed to get away. So all the small shit, I don't even think about it. Okay. So, Fetro. Yep. Thanks for being on Streetwalks. Thank you for having me. I always ask everyone at the beginning, do you remember my name? <laughs> Sage. Oh, nice. He, he, he remembers my name. That was good. Um, so I also always mention to everyone, as you can tell, it's very casual. We just walk and talk and... Right. Dope idea, by the way. Thanks. I appreciate it. Dope idea, by the way. Um, so welcome to New York. Thank you. When did you get here? Uh, when, did, when did we get here? Been Today is actually what, Tuesday? Today is Tuesday. I have to think yeah, about so it. Yeah, so we got here like Sunday night. Okay, and when Monday do you, you leave tomorrow? Uh, Yeah, we'll probably leave tomorrow. Do you or know? Thursday. Oh, okay, so you don't have flights yet? No, nah, no, nah, no flights. We drive. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're okay. in DC, so it don't make no sense to fly here. We drive. Okay. We love to drive three hours. Okay, not bad. Mm -hmm. I thought DC was like. Long, oh, well, I, so I live on Long Island. Yeah. So for me, it's like it could be like six hours to D.C. Oh, um, right. But, um, so, okay, so you're from D.C. Yeah. And you and you live in D.C. I'm from D.C. I live. Can't let everybody know where I live at. I got ops. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going back to D.C. after this. Um, so my goal of talking to you is to kind of get a picture of where you're from yeah what your what you've learned yeah. what what the lessons in life are uh -huh. and the whole idea behind it is kind of like if someone's gonna watch this how can we inspire them so like right. even if you like i know you went to jail and i don't even know you went to jail for anything Absolutely. but like what's the lesson from that like i don't like to focus so much on the the bad stuff. I want to focus on what we got, what, what you got out of it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what it was like growing up. Well, my name is Fat Trail. I'm from Washington D.C. I'm from the northeast section of D.C. I'm from a hood called East Street, 1500 block of Pentacles, Benton Road. You know what I'm saying? Um, growing up single mom, two brothers, so she had three kids in the house. Uh, all boys. All boys. Times was hot. Um, mom worked two jobs, put herself through college. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, Did she put herself through college when you guys were in the picture? Or before then? Yes. She put she put herself through college while she was raising us. Oh, good for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And something like one year she might take a break this year. Yeah. But yeah, but she she eventually graduated. That's awesome. Got her degree. And um, you know, just young boys growing up in the hood, we had to fend for ourselves. Um, we felt as though we had to help our mother out as much as we can. So we jumped in the streets early. And so what does that mean? What were you what were you when you jump in the streets, what are you doing? Um, anything to make a dollar. I was uh I was staying in fake relationships with women, using them for their money. I was gambling for money. I was robbing for money. I was selling coke, weed for money. You know what I'm saying? Selling guns, trading guns, anything to get a dollar, anything to um, help put food on the table. And what did that feel like at the time? Did it just feel like the It norm? felt like I was on top of the world. Okay. Breaking law every day, doing what the fuck you want to do, running up your own check. Um, taking care of your family, getting fly, popping bottles, fucking bitches. Felt like I was on top of the world. And now, does do you look back with the same sentiment, or do you also look back like, well, I wasn't doing it necessarily the right way to, um, like, what's your perspective now? I put it this way. I look back, I really don't have no regrets. Um, I wish I would have started music earlier. I wish I would have took music more serious. I wish I would have took the business aspect more serious, but I really don't have no regrets about um, how I grew up, though. Okay. Or the decisions I made. It made me who I am. You know, and the music that I make, I am who I am due to... Where you came from. Where I came from. And nowadays, would you do those same things? I'm guessing you're in a different financial situation stuff now yeah, where you I'm don't in need a, to I'm go. In a, I'm in a different financial situation and a different stage of life, period. So we don't need to revert back to that old, those old ways. Yeah. But I tell you one thing though, if I go broke, I'm gonna get it the best way I can regardless. I'm a hustler first. Mm. Hustler first, clubbing always. And what did your mom go to school for? What did she become career-wise? Um, well, she got two degrees. So I know the first degree was from a school called, what, is, what was that college called? Computer, computer, CLC or something. I forgot the name of the first college. And then she got a degree for, from Sojourner Douglas University. So um, basically what she do now, my mom is like, uh, what's it called? What, what do they call them? Um, like she go and make check on all the single moms with kids, make sure that they are uh, either working or, 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 or taking care of their kids, got food. And she's a social worker. That's what okay, she is, okay, okay. a social worker. So, cool. you know, she just check on all the women around the city. Everybody know my mother from being a lady. They make sure all the single moms are straight, making sure they got pampers, milk, food on the table, uh, cool. making sure that all the females got good job opportunities and stuff like that. Real heavy in the community. And growing up, did your mom know what you were into and did she try to steer you away from that? Or um, what was her perspective? Well, honestly, I jumped, I probably jumped in the streets, like actually started really hustling like 13, 14. I didn't get shot until I was 19. When I got shot at the age of 19, that's when she actually had proof of what I was doing in the street. So she didn't really know? She didn't really know. She just knew I was outside with my brothers and every day I was outside, but she didn't, she didn't know that I was hustling, you know what I'm saying, until I got shot. And what was getting shot like? Um, what you mean, like the pain? Yeah, like, do you uh, remember, it was, was at, it painful at that time, immediately? At that time, it was the worst pain I ever felt. Um, until I got stabbed. That was the worst pain I ever felt. But um, when I got shot, uh, yeah, I got shot in the back of my right leg. So it was, it was pretty painful. I was on bed rest for a couple of days, but I would say in like six or seven days, I was back outside. I was walking around with, with my crutches, so. Damn. Yeah. And getting stabbed, where were you stabbed? <laughs> it's crazy, because I was stabbed in my right leg too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So what, so like I, from behind you and just like? Nah, right, right, right here. Stand right here. And where did they come? Put the, put the knife all the way in. When they tried to pull the knife out, the handle broke off the knife. That, ooh, that yeah. was worse than getting shot? The pain, yes. Yes. Was there, oh, that is interesting. Yeah. I would guess. Um, because if, if, if I would have to guess, I would always believe that getting shot would feel worse than getting stabbed. Yeah. But 
from my personal experience, getting stabbed was far more painful than getting okay. shot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So getting into music, when did you start finding like? Where, when did you discover that there's this other opportunity to to make money and build a career through music? Um, I believe I was 16. Uh, I was going to Potomac Job Corps, and um, this guy who lived in my my mom neighborhood he offered to take me, he offered to take me to the uh, studio. Pay attention, Blue. He offered to take me to the studio. So. Um, the first time I ever heard my voice, like on an MP3, the first time I ever heard myself rap is when I fell in love with music. I, I, I knew that I had the ability to be a star. Two seconds. Are you good walking down the stairs backwards? Okay, take your time. So then from then on, you just took it seriously? Um, no. Okay. So like when I was at 16, I was staying on Job Corps. You know, I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Job Corps, but you have to live on, well, not. Nah, you can, you can live on campus or live off campus. I lived on campus. Wait, what is it? Potomac Job Corps. Job Corps is like a school, a uh, vocational school, where they teach you classes and trades. Excuse me. Excuse us, man. So basically, um, it's from age, Job Corps is from age 16 to 25. Okay. And they teach you, you can, be, uh, you can learn a painting trade, you can learn a culinary arts trade, how to cook. Uh, my trade was brick mason. I learned how to, you know, be a bricklayer, like basically my trade was construction. Okay. So um, he was sneaking me back and forth off campus to go record, but I never really took rap serious until after I got shot. After I got off, when I was on bed rest, I wrote a rack of records. And um, when I got off bed rest, I went and recorded them. And then I just told myself, I'm about to go hard with this rap shit. Okay. Yeah. And what's been a, a key to growing a following, and, whether it's on social media or like, What's been the key? Any things that if someone were listening, they're like, I want to start being an artist, like, but how do I start growing a following? I mean, first you got to start with your city where you're from, I would say. Uh, social media, of course, but I'm talking about like the clubs, getting into the clubs, getting to know the DJs, getting to know the promoters, you okay. know what I'm saying? Getting to know the DJs at all the radio stations. Go to all your local colleges, promote your music, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, I started out by going to Howard University, passing out CDs. Bowie State University, passing out CDs. I would catch the trains to all the high schools, pass out my CDs, mm. you feel me? So that's how I was getting my name in the street. Yeah. Plus every open mic event, I was at every open mic event performing. No matter if it was 10 people in the club or 1,000 people in the club, I was performing at all the open mics. So that's how my name was getting up there. And then of course, you know, Facebook and um, um, Twitter and all that stuff, Instagram, it was the same level, you know? We all follow each other, we all know each other, so the, 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 build, the, the following just built. So as you're doing all the things you're describing, that's when it also started growing online? Absolutely. So it was, it was by getting out there in person that actually helped your streaming, your numbers? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. But you gotta understand, I've been rapping long before they were streaming. You feel me? Like, yeah, yeah. Before streams and yeah. Apple it was Music the CDs and all. Yeah, 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 it was, it was CDs. CDs. It was CDs and debtpiff.com, live mixtapes, stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, so, I've, been, I've been rapping long before all that. Yeah. And then that's also where you just need to be adaptable too and roll with the changes. No, you gotta grow with the changes. Like, um, if this is gonna be your profession, I feel as though you gotta take it serious and you gotta roll with the punches. Yeah. Music is evolving, the business is constantly evolving. Yeah. So you gotta keep rolling with it. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Otherwise you're just gonna what's fall the point off. Of, what's yeah. the point of doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Um so as far as where you're at now with like do you feel like from a business and financial perspective, you are smart and in a good place do you feel like you're st I mean we're always learning but do you feel yeah. like you're still learning and trying to get your footing of course absolutely every day I'm still learning no matter how much money I make no matter what awards I win or where I go in life every day I'm still learning okay um, I'm pretty sure before this conversation in with you I, I, I would have learned something new mm. so I'm always learning that's my mind state um, always learning and, and just very humble blessed man and, and, and um, Paying attention, man. Trying to, trying to, trying to be a millionaire. So, what are you doing to be a millionaire? Like, are you? Are there any particular things you're investing in? Working my in? ass off every single day. 
working my ass off every single day, but also getting more in tune with the business, you know what I'm saying? Paying attention to these business meetings and, um, you know, I've been in more in tune with my lawyers. Mm. You feel me? Just listening more. At first I was only concerned really about the music and performing. You feel me? Yeah. But now There's I'm like, it. yeah, it's more to it. So now I'm getting more into the business side. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. Um, have you done any, like, have you purchased any real estate yet or done anything that is worth noting with your investment wise? Um, that type of information, when it comes to stuff like that, I'm the type of person, I, I don't share that type of information. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, I keep that, I keep stuff like that, what I'm doing, business adventures and business endeavors and stuff like that, separate. But have I purchased like a big piece of, nah, but invested money, several places. Okay, yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. Have you made any mistakes and therefore learned anything with making a mistake with, with money? Um, yeah, just blowing it, you know what I'm saying? Just on clothes, jewelry, like yeah. stupid shit? girls, clothes, drugs, cars. A lot of guns, a lot of guns and ammunition. A lot of lawyers, you feel me? Um, my first check I got um, from m and in Atlantic, I blew through that shit. I blew through it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I was young, 20 what, 21, 22? Yeah. Signing for that money, I was young, you know what I'm saying? So now you do it differently, is what you're saying? Absolutely. Okay. Age, I've matured, I've grown. You know, my oldest child is 15, she'll be 16 this year. Damn. I got an eight-year-old and a three-year-old that'll be four in July next month. So, life is different for me. Yeah. I have to, I can't spend like I used to because my life is not affording me to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, it take a man to say, you know what? I can't do that. I gotta walk away from this. I should do this, I should do that. And that's where I'm at in my life. I'm just trying to make better decisions as a man. And if you were in that same position, that you were at 21, 22, 23 now, and I'm sure you are in different ways. Knowing what I know now. Yeah, like what would you do differently? Um, probably, I probably would have invested in some big real estate properties. Okay. Early on, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, I probably would have got my little homie Squirrely to Ben create his own record label, you know, Ben sign artists and stuff like that. I would have bought a home based studio. Okay. I would have did a lot of things though. Yeah. yeah. Well, look. You and it's learn. definitely not too late. Yeah, well, it's, it's not. Too late. It's never too late. Even no. when you're 65 or 80, it's yeah. never too late to do things differently and do, too them, late do it at better. All. Um, so I've heard you say um, that before you went to jail, you, I don't know if you said you weren't a good father, but you weren't around. You were sending money, you, they were, you were making sure your kid or kids were, their needs were met, but you weren't actually present. Right. So can you talk to me a little bit about that and what you changed when you got out of jail? Um, yeah, so basically, I felt like, you know, number one, actually claiming my kids and being in my kids' life, I felt like that was a, a, a great first step into being a good father, that's number one. But I also felt like that as long as my, none of my kids didn't want for nothing, clothes, food, groceries, uh, games, TVs, toys, stuff like that, I thought that I was being a good father because Technically, I took care of everything financially, but I was never there, yeah. you feel me? Yeah. And a lot a lot of times when I wasn't there, it was because that I was working, you know? Rapping is a very busy career, mm -hmm. but a lot, of, a lot of other times, I made excuses not to be there. Oh, what's up, I'll pay for the trip. Nah, I ain't going, but I'll pay for it, mm -hmm. you feel me? But I should've went, you yeah. know? I, should, I, should've, I should've lived in those moments with the, with the kids and their moms at, at that time, and I didn't do that. So when you ask that question and you say, what's the difference now? Now I'm making those decisions now. What about being in jail? Like what, what made you, was it just being in jail that made you realize that? Or was it like something? Yes, yes. And here's why. Because I had, I had time to sit down and think. I brainstormed over my mm. whole life for four years. Mm. Trail, how did you get to this point? You know what I'm saying? It ain't like I was out on the street committing crimes every day, but I was protecting myself in the wrong way. I was carrying a bunch of firearms. I was flashing them on Instagram. Mm. I'm riding down the highway doing 120. I'm drunk driving everywhere. I'm going to four clubs a night. I'm stopping in all the popping hoods in my city, stopping shooting dice, going to f here, f there. And that's what led to me getting locked up. So when you, when you, when you sit in a cell, 
for four years and you looking back at your last five years that you was on the street doing, you like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. If I would have spent most of that time strictly working and, and being more active with my children, out with my kids places, I would have never been, been pulled over by the police. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. So. You're like, there is a better place for me to be, which could have also benefited both me and my children. Of course. But and this isn't an excuse mm -hmm. because I think any parent should be a good parent. But you, you, what were you, 15 when you had a kid? Um, I, I, we, we made her when I was 16. She was born when I was 17. Okay. Yeah. And my baby mother passed uh, three years after that. My baby mother passed in 2010. So I've been a single parent for 13 years. Oh my God. I'm so yeah. sorry. Can I ask wh why, what happened? Um, she passed away from a heart attack. She was 23 years old. Did they say how that like happened with her? The only thing, the only thing, the only thing I know for sure is they say she it started with a blood clot in her leg and somehow it came, it went to her heart and stopped her heart. Oh my God, that's horrible. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. And ha with your that's your daughter's mom? Yeah, that's my oldest child mom. So with your oldest child. She, if you, with you traveling so much and her not having a, a mom around, how... Said, um, my mom. Okay, she My goes, mom helped me tremendously. Okay. My mom, you know what I'm saying? And I had different um, female figures in my life, you know. I got a lot of women who I look at like aunts, like older women who I look at like aunts who always guided me and helped took care of me. Yeah. You know, I couldn't have got through raising a child and and, 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 and doing a rap career without some help, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's, that's where my question came from. Like, how do you... Mostly do my mom. Yeah. My okay. mom helped me the most. So she'll, so she'll like, kind of like, her. your mom is her home base, and then you're... Yeah, like, yeah. Out kind mm -hmm. of thing? Okay. Right. Um, but that was before, like, you know, before, now my daughter, she's with me full time now, so, you know. Okay. Yeah, so. So, but like, when you're here, is she home alone? Nah, she, she, I mean, she not at home alone. Okay. She got people there with her. Okay. I just rather not say who okay. they're with her. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you used to be signed to Rick Ross's label, right? Yeah. And you're, but you're still, you still have a great relationship with him? Absolutely. So Absolutely. What's, what's the key to, for you at least, to ending a business relationship, but continuing a personal one? Understanding and realizing that business and business and personal is personal. You know what I'm saying? Um, me getting out of the Atlantic Maybach contract was business. Mm. It wasn't nothing personal. It's not about overperforming or underperforming. It's just business. What's the next business deal? How can this be negotiated? What are the pros and cons of this deal? Moving forward. And do you feel like that? I, I think that's an amazing point and very true, by the way. Do you feel like it really took two to tango with that? Like not just you believing that, but him probably believing that? Because you hear so many things where, you know, stories where shit goes bad, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like he also had the same mentality and that's why it worked? Of course, of course. Um, I feel like, I feel like, well, for our situation, yeah, yeah we both had the same mentality, but for everybody's situation, it's not gonna be that way. And I still suggest that even if the person you in business with is not separating business from personal. You should also still always separate business from personal. Yeah, yeah. There should never be no ill will to feelings toward a business deal ending. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's business. Yeah. You feel me? Like it ain't it ain't it ain't nothing personal. Although sometimes your business can affect your personal life, but we hustlers. So, but I don't. You probably were going through other people. Probably wasn't just like, hey, Rick. You know, I think this isn't working out, right? But yeah. like, were there any hard conversations that you had to have directly with him? Absolutely not. Okay. No hard conversations at all. It's and business. You know so, so were you discussing business directly with him at any point and it just wasn't hard for you or you were going through other people? No, it wasn't. Nothing was hard for me. We, we, I, me and Ross discussed business a lot, but did he discuss more business with my managers and my lawyers? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. But whenever me and Ross spoke about business, it was all love. That's me, cool. Uh, me, me getting another deal with Asylum, it ain't have nothing to do with whether something was going good or bad at yeah. um, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um... In fact, I 
some of the staff that I'm working with at Asylum now is the same staff that I worked with at Atlantic. Uh, so, funny. you know what I'm saying? So it's 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 business. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you do. Do you think you would ever do anything together again, business-wise? In any absolutely. Capacity? Yes, I would. Yes, if the business is good, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And um, it don't necessarily have to be rap. It could be real estate. It could yeah. be yeah, yeah. automobiles. It could be alcohol. You know what I'm saying? Like Ross got his hands in a lot of different pots. Yeah. So it's always, and he, he definitely one of those key figures that you can go to with some opportunities and make some money. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And that's what I love about Ross. It's like, hands down, one of the best lyricists that ever rapped in the game. In my opinion, my favorite lyricist ever. Yeah. But the fact that he willing to put African-Americans in good position to make some money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that says a lot about him. Yeah. Fuck how many Grammy nominations, BET awards, uh, 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 record sold, album sold. The fact that, hey, I'm still willing to help my people get some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, hey, he, he, let's get some money like this. The fact that he's still willing to do that, respect him. Yeah. Even if he didn't have any of those accolades, but was just a businessman who had the opportunity to put certain people in certain places, mm -hmm. it would still mean a ton. A ton. Yeah, yeah. A ton. Because um, he don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. He could, hey, look, man, I'm rich. I got my money. I did it. Fuck it. I don't need to teach y'all nothing. I ain't trying to help y'all. Yeah. He could have the right to do that, but he chose not to. Yeah. And that says a lot about him as a man. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, even just doing street walks, like, I have grown my following a bunch. Mm hmm but at the same time, at the beginning, and I'm still like relatively, you know, small, mm -hmm. but at the beginning, there were certain people who opened the door to me when I had less than a thousand YouTube subscribers. Right. Mm -hmm. And these people were opening the door for artists with over a million Instagram followers, but that was just because they knew, my, they, I've worked with them in other capacities and they knew my hustle. Like, though, they didn't have to do that for me. Right. You know, so yeah. I totally, I mean, it's obviously different, and I'm a white girl, and it's right. a different scenario, but right. like, I understand the appreciation and Absolutely. the fact that these certain people don't have to do what they're doing Absolutely. to help others. Absolutely. I um, totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, so what's the biggest thing you're working on within yourself right now? Um, like, this biggest... is me kind of being like, like, do you have an insecurity? Do you have something that you just feel like you need to improve? Like... Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like as a man, I gotta improve in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? Um, I gotta improve with financial literacy. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. I gotta improve as a father, as a dad. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Uh, I gotta improve as an artist, as a lyricist, as a song maker, as a writer. You feel me? As a label mate. You feel me? As a friend to my friends and my peers and my associates. You know, I yeah. I, I can grow in a lot of ways. Do you? Uh do you try to figure out actionable ways to achieve those goals? Like, I, like at least for me, I feel like oftentimes it's like not enough to be like, I'm gonna be better with my eating. Right. I'm gonna be better with my, you know, focus at work. Right. I'm like, okay, I need to give myself, you're not allowed to take a break at work until 90 minutes. Like, right. you know, mm -hmm. do, do you think about like um, actionable? The, the details and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, or yes. maybe that's somewhere you need to work on too. I don't know. Yes, no, I do think about it. I do think about that very much, man. Um, you know, my downtime when I'm traveling, when I'm on them planes or when I'm on them long trips, a lot of times when I'm quiet, I'm thinking about what I can work on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? My patience. I'm thinking about working on uh, the fact that I could listen more. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful kids. Look at the children. Look at the children. Oh my God, there's so many. Yeah. Field trip or something going on. Yeah, field trip. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, all, I'm always thinking about constantly evolving and, bec and becoming a better person. We can always talk about Nightmare on East Street too. Okay. My new album that's ju that just dropped on June 9th. So let's talk about it. Uh, Tell me about it. Top 25 on Apple Music Cheers right to now. That. Yep, I actually just cracked the 25th spot yesterday. That so, must uh, feel good. Yeah, that felt good. That's huge for me because you know I only been home for what seven months. You know what I'm saying? I just did four years. And so to to actually come home to a fan base, you know, to actually come home to people who still want to hear me rap, yeah. who still want to see me perform, that's a blessing. Yeah. You feel me? They could have moved on. Artists coming 
out every day, every day, they you are. know, you know. So that's a blessing, man. So yeah. you know, um, I'm just I'm just blessed to uh, be able to still work and do what I love. And um, Nightmare on East Street too, man. Nothing but good feedback. Top 25 on Apple Music. I couldn't be happier. I just told my brothers today when I jumped in the truck this morning. I said, man, I feel like my old self again. He said, what you mean by that? I said, man, I'm out in New York. I'm working. The album just dropped. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's, it's, I, I'm back. So well, why is that? Because your project just came out and you're just doing things that make you happy? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm in that mode. You know what I'm saying? I'm in that mode. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in work mode. I'm in serious grind mode. And um, I'm also happy. You know, the kids are straight. Uh, <laughs> the baby mothers is, 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 is we, we, we in a good space. Me and my other two baby mothers, we in a good space. Uh, everything is good over at Asylum. The album is doing good. We got a lot more meetings to plan about the future. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, new deals, new negotiations, new contracts. Mm -hmm. I just feel good. Yeah. It's a beautiful day in New York. I'm walking with Sage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it is a beautiful day. Nothing and, feels better than this. And that's awesome that you feel so good. That's that's the best. Mm -hmm. That's the best feeling. Absolutely, nothing feels better than this. And congratulations on uh, the top twenty-five. Thank you so much. That's awesome. It. Yeah. yeah, you have beautiful eyes. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Do any of your other family members have eyes like yours? Um, yes. Yeah, so my whole fam my whole father's side of my family got these eyes. So. Um, you know, my mom's side, my whole family, we African American. My father's side, my father is African American, but my father's grandmother, which is my great grandmother, mm -hmm. she was Indian and white, Ooh. and her husband was black. So my great grandma, my great grandma Gladys, had long silky black hair down to here, and her eyes was blue. Oh, cool. So, and she had kids. All, all her kids' eyes was hazel. And my father's eyes is hazel like mine, but his is even lighter. And then I got these eyes. Cool, they're yeah. they're awesome. Did any of your kids get your eyes? No. Oh, uh, damn it. Uh, That's okay. I'm, I'm hey, so listen. I'm so pissed about that because it's cool because hopefully like my grandkids can get the eyes. Yeah. Like it could skip a generation. Yeah, know? yeah. I, do they? What color? So they have brown eyes. Yeah, they had brown eyes, like light brown eyes. Okay, brown eyes are but I also the great. Green, I wanted the green and the hazy. And the yeah, and the, they, they are really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, either of your brothers have your eyes? Nope. Because, oh. you know, my, my, my mom, she had three sons, but we all got different dads. Oh, okay, me? okay, okay. Which is ironic because I got three kids and I got three different baby moms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. It's crazy how life works, right? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it is. What can we expect from you, or what are your goals? Like, if we were to talk a year, or two years, five years from now, whatever you want to kind of like timeline you want to give, what are your goals? Um, well, you know, man, honestly, I just did four years in prison. I came home in November of 2022. Here it is, June of 2023, and I just dropped my first album. So, I say that to say, man, really, I want to drop three or four more projects this year. This year? Okay. If I, if I had it my way. I don't I don't know if that would happen, but if yeah. I had it my way, I'd drop three or four more projects. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, my goal in the future is just, to, like I said, just to be more savvy with financial literacy, um, being more included in my, 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 my business aspect of my career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be better as a man. And, and again, as a father and everything else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be better, constantly working, constantly learning. And don't forget about those actionable uh, goals to help get right. the small achieve ones, all the those details. goals. Yeah. The detail. It's so easy to say, I want to be better at this, but then it's like, but how are you going to get better at that? You know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I just learned in my life. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> So anyway, Betrell, thanks for being on Streetwalks. Thank you so much, man, for having this me. Is, this is, I was going to hug you. Oh, yes, hugs, of course. <laughs> this has been, this hugs. has been great. Hugs. What's up? This is Sage with Betrell. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on our new episode, Streetwalks.